Hi everyone, David here, and I actually had a very minor surgical procedure yesterday. I had a gallstone removed from a bile duct. This was me straight after the procedure, and this was me a little bit after that. Again, as you can see, straight back into creating. I am supposed to be R&R&R, and &R and &R, rest, recovery, relaxation, doctor's orders, but I can't just sit around and consume. I actually find it relaxing to create. I create a lot more than I consume, and I thought I would just think of a video that I could make without any prep, without any stress, or you know, having to go somewhere. So I just opened the Mac and give you a run through of Darkroom, run through one of my presets actually that I've shared recently. I don't know where Darkroom's preset that people have shared are, if you can access them. Uh, but if you go on my Twitter, then you will find it somewhere on my profile. It's called White Heart, and I'm gonna take you through it here today. A nice, easy video to re recover from this procedure for. So let's jump into Darkroom on the Mac. So here we are in Darkroom. Let's have a look at some photo information. This is an iPhone 13 Pro Max raw file taken with the main camera. These are the settings. I know you like that sort of information. And this is where it was taken. Sulphur Keys, South Manchester. Very, very beautiful, very, very historic if you're ever in the north of England in Manchester. This part here, Altsall Park, home to Altsall Hall. Part of that building, 1200s. So if you like history, then get yourself down to that area. Anyway, let's press, is it four on the keyboard? No, three on the keyboard. Jump into the sliders and make some edits. Now. I've already made the preset, so this is not going to be me editing live. I am going to be moving sliders and I will add some commentary here and there when it's necessary because I, I didn't make White Heart on this photo. So this photo just happens to go well with the White Heart preset. I, I originally made it for a Sony a7 III RAW file, but this is an iPhone RAW file and it, it works well. So I'm going to be obviously using this file today. A fade of 38 may seem extreme, but it works in the overall context of the rest of the edits. I do like a good vignette, especially in a portrait. And uh, one, uh, one comment about Darkroom. There's still no white balance. Darkroom guys know that white balance is probably my number one feature. I mean, I would think that white balance is such a basic thing that it should already be here. But I don't know. I don't know how easy it is to implement white balance and things like that. Hopefully we see it in the future soon. In fact, I'll just go into some more detail here. This is the split toning section. You've got the highlights and the shadows. And you can see here, if I bring the amount up, just, and if you hear some weird noises, it's my finger rubbing on the trackpad. Uh, so we've got, you know, 100. You can see how the highlights have changed color. And I like quite a red, I like the old Canon colors. I say old, they're probably still the same. More of a bias towards the reds, the old Nikon um, color profile, color science, whatever it is, used to lean quite green. Canon used to go towards the red. We like to bring out the reds in the in the skin tones, and that's what that does. It's it's subtle, but it's nice. Next, let's jump into the curves, pressing number four, and this is where I'm going to add a lot of the contrast to my photo. This is where I add most of my contrast to most of my photos, actually. But I don't do it here in RGB. I do it here in the separate color channels. I'll give you a quick uh, idea of what that looks like. Um, if we make an S curve. Keep an eye on the how much contrast is in the image. So it's gone way up there and you can take away and add as much as you want. Curves again in Darkroom is something that I think need reworking. So hopefully in the future we'll see some more control over the curves. But in this preset, blacks are going to be faded. You see what that does there. Subtly to six. And then I'm going to add contrast in the reds. So I'm going to drag the shadows down to 15. And you can see how that affects the image. Just in the reds. 
which is what I want, but there is more to do. Go in the greens, that's 17. And when I've finished, I'll show you why I do this and what this allows you to do. So I won't say too much now, I'll just quickly, quickly uh, just get this done. So 20, maybe some copy and paste between the channels I would like in future iterations of Darkroom if possible. But anyway, we are done. And now the image has again, a lot more contrast. And you can see if I say was to move this slider, so this is the shadows in the blue channel, you can see how it affects the image. So I have more control over my image this way, I feel, and it's what I like. So obviously all images are different. Say I, I wanted a colder vibe in the image, then I, I could do something like this, you know, make it what, maybe I wanna make her look ill, then <laughs> I can do it like this. Obviously there are other ways to do that, but I like, this way and I feel like the contrast, this is better for adding contrast than just whacking up a contrast slider. It works for me. Let's go into the HSL. And first, before we do that, let's uh, just see what we've actually done to the image. So here is our edits with the sliders. We add the curves and I think you can turn the sliders off. Yeah, so that's just the curves. It doesn't look very good. Add the sliders together and things are looking a lot better. But that, that's a nice flat raw file, even without the curves, if I do say so myself. So let's jump in to the H, S and the L. And this is where I find the edits I make are the most random. A lot of them can contradict each other. and not really affect the photo. Especially when you, see, when I make a preset, I made this White Heart preset because it was made in a place called White Heart, which is in North Manchester, actually. And I'll edit the photo, o often not in this order. I rarely, there's, there's no aquas, excuse me. I, I, I start with the curves always, and then I might do the sliders last. So later on, these sliders don't actually make sense in most pictures. In fact, probably in the original, they didn't make much sense, but I may have moved something and haven't moved it back. And then I just save the preset and then it, there it is in the, in the preset. I'm sure if I was to change the hue in the yellow, for example, yeah, like in, in this image, nothing changes. That's what I'm trying to say, hey, Right, leave me alone. If I don't make sense. Okay, something does change. If you look up here and in other places, something does change. So it's not completely useless, the, the minus yellow hue. But anyway, if I waffle, leave me alone because I, I had an operation yesterday. So <laughs> almost finished. We go subject and then no, we don't. No, 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 not yet. Leave that there. We go to background. So first we have a background mask. I do love using masks in darkroom. And this is literally just to saturate the background. And like, again, will does the background really need saturating in this image? Perhaps not, but I do like the way the reds are uh, punching there. Can you, in masks, use HSL or is it just sliders? It is just sliders. Just so I'd see, I don't actually know. Now I do. But you may have noticed, if we look over here, when I change the background, the foreground changes as well. So that is why we need the subject mask, but not on her, we actually, how do you go out? Yes. By the way, how good is that? It's managed to detect that she's behind there and not 
and it's continued. Look at that. Her green coat has, the, the mask overlay has continued. That is so good. Well done, Darkroom. Very impressed. How do you zoom? Right, okay. Anyway, subject, invert. Because now she's not affected. So in the background mask, she was. See that? But here in the subject mask, she's not. So I want to make the background a bit darker. Zoom out fully to 55. That might be a bit, is that a bit too dark now? If I reset that, go away, overlay. Mm. It's part of the preset, minus 40, maybe, maybe not minus 55, minus 40. So that is my white heart preset. Now, how about a bit of a bonus for you for watching this far? When I was in hospital recovering, I've actually been in for five days, uh, six, actually it'll be like more like six or seven days in total now. Um, I got curious about Luminar AI and thought I'd download it. And um, I'm planning a focus versus Luminar AI portrait bokeh battle comparison. But I thought, to finish off this picture, I thought I would uh, just show you a little bit of what I've been playing around with in Luminar AI. So this is Luminar AI. And first thing I want to do is actually change the sky. There is a, a great sunset sky. Remember Photoshop camera does this as well. I've actually made a video on Photoshop camera. Don't watch it please because it's, uh, it's one of my older videos that I am in the mood to go back and sort of redo all of those old videos I don't like anymore. Um, next thing I want to do, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this actually, is uh, sun rays. So if I act like the sun was just coming through here and just turn it up very very subtly maybe to 15 and we can play with the length a little bit that would create sun rays this penetration what's aha all ah, right okay yeah that's too extreme isn't it okay let's see so that that's not that looks quite realistic that's not too bad that's all right. Uh, there is a mood I like called Long Beach. Now I have just spent time making this beautiful preset for you. So I'm not going to just change it with Long Beach, but it, it does look more suitable for this new sunset type of, of image. And finally, the piece that it is dance is the portrait bokeh. We whack it up to 50 and wait for it to render. She should snap into sharp focus any moment now. And uh, come on, there we go. There's the mask. And yeah, that is a nice portrait. So from this to this in a couple of apps. So there is your nice your easy video following doctor's orders. I It's been completely unscripted. If it's been a bit incoherent, I apologize. But hey, I'm on the mend. I'm getting better. I'm due in for another operation. Six to eight weeks is the time scale for that one. So it's probably going to be, it might be the back end of this year, early next year. But hopefully, that means my health issues that have plagued me throughout 2022, the issues that meant I've not been uploading videos are now over. Fingers crossed that 2023, I can start uploading and making content regularly. Won't be uploading weekly again, not just yet. And I doubt I'll get back to weekly because those videos were made with compromise. And that was when I was full-time on YouTube. Not full, not gonna be full-time anymore. I do have a full-time job. So not gonna be weekly, but they will be without compromise. So thank you very much for watching and 
go and edit something, go and use my preset white heart. And you will see how it applies to no other photos. It works well with nothing else. <laughs> so there you go. You're welcome. Oh my gosh. Good quality family entertainment. Well done, Dave. Well done.